Today we're going to talk about hierarchical forecasting. Let's dive into it. Basically, imagine you have several time series that are related. Let's take the case of the Australian GDP. The Australian GDP is measured by the Australian Bureau of Statistics as the average of three main figures, production, income and expenditure. The GDP is therefore directly dependent on three time series from a lower level. We could predict each one of them individually, but how could we use the individual information contained in each time series to our advantage? There are gains from forecasting them using an aggregate model versus forecasting them just individually. We're going to go through some strategies to make this happen. First, let's look at an example of a hierarchical structure. This is the simplest case where you add these two time series, AA and AB, on the bottom layer in order to get this other time series, A, on the layer above it. This can also be applied to temporal hierarchies. For example, if we sum the time series of three months of sales, we should get the time series that reports the quarter sales. And if we sum the four time series of quarterly sales, we should get the time series of yearly sales. Alternatively, if there is no hierarchy, but we're still trying to use all of these time series, then this is called a group structure. We believe they are related, but there is no clear hierarchy between the time series. Strategies Now there are different strategies depending on what we're trying to predict. In point forecasting, we try to predict a point in the future where the time series will likely be at. We can use bottom-up to aggregate individual time series, starting by forecasting the lower level time series, and then progressively combining the forecasts of this level until reaching the top of the hierarchy. The combination is done using a linear model similar to a multiple linear regression. Bottom-up forecasts have the advantage of no information loss, but can be very noisy and challenging to forecast top levels. However, after reviewing this method, the authors come to the conclusion that bottom-up approaches suck. We can also use top-down, which instead of starting from the bottom, starts from the top, using the forecasted time series from the upper levels to progressively predict the lower levels in the hierarchy. However, top-down approaches seem to be highly reliable for these levels, but fail to capture characteristics of lower-level time series. A compromise between top-down and bottom-up is middle-out. Instead of starting either from the top or from the bottom, we can start straight from the middle layer. This is a compromise between the two approaches. We use the top-down approach to predict lower levels and the bottom-up approach to predict upper levels. Instead of using top-down, bottom-up or middle-out approaches, which don't take into consideration the correlations between the time series, we can instead use reconciliation. Reconciliation works by first forecasting each time series of all levels individually and then aggregating them using a linear model for each time series. Each time series gets a saying in predicting the other time series, which is weighted. Reconciliation rocks, especially the minimum choice reconciliation, whereas the ordinarily squares and bottom-up approaches scored poorly compared to reconciliation using the minimum choice. However, reconciliation starts to lose performance when the hierarchies are big. In order to measure this, the authors have used the mean absolute scaled error, which is scale independent and not as affected by extreme values. Probabilistic forecasting Instead of just predicting the mean point, we can instead predict the whole distribution of where the next value might land in. By having the whole probability distribution, we can quantify uncertainty. One other cool thing about probabilistic forecasting is that we can convert the output into point forecasting by simply picking the mean, the median or the mode in the distribution. There are two options to do this. First, we assume that the target follows a particular distribution, either normal, log normal, Tweety, whatever. In the case of predicting Gaussian distribution, we really just need to predict the mean and the standard deviation. We can use the same method we'd use for point forecasting, such as bottom-up or reconciliation. The ordinarily squares also works pretty well if the distribution we're trying to predict is a Gaussian. We're still going to predict one point, the mean. We can use the same logic to predict the standard deviation. Another option is to not assume any particular distribution. We can't use point forecasts because we can't define our distribution in a couple of values. 
The best method found in this case was also the minimum trace, even for non-parametric probabilistic forecasting. For evaluating the probabilistic forecasts, they use the cumulative rank probability score, CRPS, but also mentioned the generalized energy score when evaluating probabilistic forecasts with multiple outputs. Conclusions It's still worth it to use hierarchical models, even if you just care about one of those particular time series. Related time series may help you predict the time series you really care about. If you like this paper, I recommend looking at reconciliation using machine learning, which captures these non-linear relationships between the time series.